IET NCERT presents audiobook Introductory Microeconomics page 35 module 2.2 returns of an input rationale it is crucial for the firm to decide which item to produce how much to produce and what combination of factors to use if the firm is unable to vary or change one or more input it uses in the short run the production activity is fixed whereas in the long run the firm can adjust its capacity of production key concepts total product average product marginal product law of diminishing marginal productivity law of variable proportions page 36 2.2.1 short run and long run in the short run a firm can vary one factor of input whereas in the long run all the factors of production can be varied the time period that determines the short run and long run does not refer to a calendar time rather it considers different periods of planning horizon of the producers of an industry in the short run we assume that factor 2 for example capital is fixed at level x 2 bar therefore the production function can be written as small q equals small f open bracket x1 comma x2 bar close bracket we shall be discussing about short run only 2.2.2 total product of the variable factor the output q can be termed as total product and is denoted by tp the total quantity of output produced by employing all the inputs in a given period of time is known as the total product while production when there is a change in any amount of input then the total product gets changed thus with a change in input there may be a change in output when we draw the graph of tp we measure the total product on the vertical axis and the amount of variable factor that is labor on the horizontal axis as drawn in the figure 2.3a the total product curve is shaped like capital s the slope of this curve increases in the beginning and eventually starts to decline as more and more of labor is employed figure 2.3a total product here we have a graph with two axes the x axis represents quantity of labor the y axis represents output or tp we have an s shaped curve here which represents tp 2.2.3 average product of the variable factor the average product of the variable factor that is labor in this case is the total product divided by the amount of labor it is denoted by capital ap and is calculated as ap subscript l equals tp divided by l where l is units of labor employed for producing a specific quantity of output as depicted in figure 2.3 b we measure the average product on the vertical axis and the amount of labor on the horizontal axis it is shaped as inverted u figure 2.3 b average product here we have a graph with two axes the x axis represents quantity of labor the y axis represents output that is capital ap the inverted u represents ap average product the inverted u shape tells us that the average product of variable factor increases initially as more of variable factor is used along with a fixed factor it reaches a maximum level and then starts decreasing this trend is clear from the data in column 4 of table 2.1 page 37 table 2.1 total product marginal product 
and average product of labor. This table has five columns and seven rows. The columns are unit of labor, unit of land, total product, marginal product, average product. When unit of labor is zero as indicated in row one, unit of land is correspondingly zero. Total product is zero. There is no marginal product and no average product. When unit of labor is one as indicated in row two, unit of land is one. Total product equals 10. Marginal product equals 10. Average product equals 10. When unit of labor is 2 as indicated in row 3, unit of land equals 1, total product equals 24, marginal product equals 14, average product equals 12. When unit of labor is 3 as indicated in row 4, unit of land equals 1, total product equals 40, marginal product equals 16. Average product equals 13.33. When unit of labor is 4 as indicated in row 5, unit of land equals 1, total product equals 50, marginal product equals 10, average product equals 12.5. When unit of labor is 5 as indicated in row 6, unit of land equals 1, total product equals equals 56. Marginal product equals 6. Average product equals 11.2. When the unit of labor is 6 as indicated in row 7, unit of land equals 1. Total product equals 57. Marginal product equals 1. Average product equals 9.5. 2.2.4 Marginal product of the variable factor. The marginal product of labor is the change in the total product when we increase the amount of labor by one unit. It is denoted by MP and is calculated as MP subscript capital L which is equal to delta TP divided by delta capital L where delta TP is change in total product and Delta capital L stands for change in labor input that caused the change in total output. Note that MP is the slope of the TP curve. From the shape of the TP curve, we can see that marginal product of labor will first increase and then decrease after some units of the labor are used. Figure 2.3 C Marginal Product Page 38 here we have a graph. The x-axis represents quantity of labor. The y-axis represents output or MP. On this graph, we have a curve in the shape of an inverted U which represents MP. The inverted U shape of the MP curve tells us that the marginal product of the variable factor increases initially as more units of variable factor are used along with the fixed factor. It reaches a maximum level and starts decreasing later as more of the variable factors are used with the same amount of fixed factor. This property of marginal productivity is the basis of law of diminishing marginal productivity. 2.2.5 Law of Diminishing Marginal Productivity why does the marginal product of additional units of variable factor start to decrease after some level of its use? Let us take an example of a farmer who has a fixed plot of land and was hiring farm labor. Here land is the fixed factor and labor is the variable factor. Initially, the farmer employed a few laborers as compared to the size of the land. Hence, the output was low. But as more labor was added to the land, output started growing proportionately more with the addition of the labor units. Then, as he kept employing more of labor to that fixed land, the marginal product of labor began to decline, 
because the fixed land became scarce in comparison to the increased labor. As a result, the output also began to fall. In Table 2.1, notice that with given amount of fixed land, as we use more of labor, indicated in column 1, the ratio of land to labor falls. As labor employed increases, that is the ratio of land to labor falls, the marginal product of labor, which is column 3 of Table 2.1, increases in the beginning and then begins to fall. It is known as the law of variable proportions and is also known as the law of diminishing marginal productivity of the variable factor, that is, labor as taken in our example. 2.2.6 Relationship between the average product and the marginal product Both AP and MP have inverted U shape, but notice the figure 2.4, where the MP curve lies above the AP curve at the initial levels of use of the labor. Page 39 1. When value of the marginal product is greater than the average product, that is, MP curve is higher than AP curve, then AP curve continues to rise. 2. When the marginal product is equal to the average product, that is, MP curve intersects AP curve, then AP curve reaches its point of maximum. 3. When the value of the marginal product is less than the average product, that is, MP curve is lower than AP curve, then AP curve begins to fall. Figure 2.4 Relationship between the average product and the marginal product Here we have a graph. The x-axis represents quantity of labor. The y-axis represents output or MP or AP. There is an AP curve here, which is in the shape of an inverted U. There is also an MP curve, which is also in the shape of an inverted U, but it is higher than the AP curve. Both these curves intersect at point M. Test your understanding. 1. The following table gives the total product of labor. Find the corresponding average product and marginal product of labor. The table has four columns and six rows. In the labor and total product columns, numbers are indicated and you have to calculate the corresponding average product and marginal product. Row 1. When the value of labor is zero, total product equals zero. What is the AP and what is the MP? In row 2, when the value of labor is 1, the total product is 15. What is the value of AP and what is the value of MP? In row 3, when labor equals 2, total product equals 35. What is the value of AP? What is the value of MP? When the value of labor is 3, as indicated in row 4, the total product equals 50. What is the average product? What is the marginal product? When the value of labor is 4, as indicated in row 5, the total product equals 40. What is the AP and what is the MP? When the value of the labor is 5, then the total product is 48. Calculate the AP and calculate the MP. 2. What do you say about the marginal product curve of a factor when its total product curve is falling? You were just listening to this chapter. Subject Coordinator Dr. Jaya Singh Production Assistant Jagbandhu Jana Sound Recordist Batilang Lindo and Vikas Sangwan Artists Anandana Kapoor and Akash Ahuja Produced by Vimlesh Chaudhary And presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India